In 2010, the median home price in the United States was $222,000. And in 2023, a whopping $430,000. Now, why is this important? because a lot of you guys out there watching this video have not experienced an equivalent increase in wages or salary during that same 13 year time period, leaving a lot of people stuck in the middle class or below. In today's times, it feels nearly impossible for a lot of people to just get ahead financially. Most people cannot even afford to buy a home, let alone afford increases in their rent each month. So it's become a challenge for a lot of individuals and a lot of families out there to figure out a way to get out of the middle class and improve their overall financial situation. In this video, we're going to uncover a few of the most critical things that you can do today in order to escape the middle class and eventually become financially free and escape the rat race. The number one thing that you can do today to start yourself on a journey to get out of the middle class is focusing on your income. And as my good old friend Dave Ramsey likes to say, the number one wealth building tool that you have is your income. There's some truth to that because the more income that you can make while not increasing your living expenses is going to yield you a greater amount of money that you can then invest into a side hustle or into something like real estate that can help build your wealth and increase your monthly income through the form of cash flow. So that's what I would focus on, but not in the traditional sense that a lot of people think, like my, my parents you know, always said, get a good job, work there, and, and maybe don't job hop as much. You wanna focus on building a career. You know, it's a lot harder in today's day and age to increase your income that way because you're likely going to be waiting for decades in order to get slow bonuses, slow promotions in order to get into a higher income. So what I recommend doing instead, if you're not ultimately career focused at the one company you're working at, which most of you honestly probably are not, um, you need to focus on what different types of careers or professions or high income skill can I develop and start applying for those jobs and job hop. A lot of people are like, oh, job hopping looks bad on a resume. Honestly, it really doesn't. As a business owner myself, what I care about is hiring employees who are going to do an A plus job. I wanna hire A players, and if they're there for only three years and then move on, I'll hire another A player. Um, I'm not so concerned with hiring somebody who's gonna work for me for 40 straight years. So think about it in that lens, and don't be tied to your current job or skill. If you guys are open to it, I would recommend getting into a position that you have a greater control over your income, meaning it's not a salary only role or a by the hour payment. Instead, what you should do is get a commission type role or a sales role. That's ultimately where you can have uncapped commission and have uncapped earnings potential. For example, right out of college back in 2016, I got my first real job, I'll call it a real job, before I was working at Dunkin' Donuts, but after that, I got an entry-level sales job at a company called Serious Computer Solutions. I was making $35,000 a year, barely enough to wipe my ass during the, the day, um, but had that job, and then I earned my first promotion to an inside sales rep position where ultimately I was gonna make $48,000, but now I had a chance to earn commission. Uh, once I felt like I was tapped on that about a year later, I realized that if I were going to get an internal promotion to an outside sales rep position where all the money is to be made, people are making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, I would probably have to wait in like four years at that company to have even a chance at getting an outside sales rep position. Um, and that was like a big pill to swallow and I didn't wanna wait, guys. I wanted to make more money so I could invest faster and ultimately quit my job faster. So what I started to do is go on LinkedIn and I was like, I don't even know how to network. So I just started with what I knew about myself and how I could connect with somebody else. So for me, that was just the college I went to, Elon University. It's a small school, about 6,000, 7,000 undergrads um, each year. And I started to look at all the big companies that I interested in working at. And at the time, I was looking at like Salesforce, Google, Workday, all these big tech companies that I knew paid really well and had good benefits. So I started using filters on LinkedIn and I searched who also went to Elon University that happened to work at that company, and all I started to do was just send DMs. Hey, my name's Michael, I also went to Elon, saw you went there and you're working at XYZ company, how do you like it? I'm interested in applying for a role there and just wanted to get some honest feedback from somebody else who works there. I almost always got a response from someone, oh, that's awesome, man, yeah, I love working here, whatever, and nine times out of 10, 
building that connection turned into a referral, meaning they referred me to their human resources team for a job listing that I saw online. You have a much better chance of getting an interview and ultimately getting the job if you have a connection at that company. So I did that multiple times and I jumped from Serious Computer Solutions, I got a job at Google as another inside sales rep. My income jumped to probably like $90,000 base plus bonus and I worked at Google for a year. And then I had another epiphany where if I was going to get to the next role at Google and make more than just 100 grand a year, I needed to probably wait three to six years. And at that point I was like, you know what? Google's amazing, great place to work, great benefits, all this great stuff, free food, but I couldn't take it anymore. So again, I networked, got a job that I probably wasn't even qualified to get as an outside sales rep at a company called Extreme Networks, where my earnings more than doubled. I had a base salary of $100,000 with an on-target commissions of a, uh, another 100 grand. So my on-target earnings or OTE was now 200,000, more than double the year before and more than quadruple that it was three years before that. So you guys, it is possible to drastically increase your income, but you need to develop a high income skill and you need to network and you need to just take action. The next most important thing you need to focus on is building a side hustle. A lot of people will refer this as the five to nine job, right? You have your nine to five working during the day to pay the bills and then you're going to develop a side hustle or a side business that can ultimately replace your five to nine. And you're gonna work on that from five to nine, meaning just your free time that you have outside your job. Now the reason this is important is because eventually this side income is going to hopefully replace your nine to five job and then you can quit your nine to five um, and just focus solely on the side hustle. Now for me, this was real estate and Airbnb properties. The one I'm sitting in today alone brings in around 150K per year and we profit around 60 to $75,000 per year. That's pretty insane. A lot of you are probably like, wow, one property could replace my entire income. And that is true. It usually only takes one to three good Airbnbs to replace most people's nine to five job. But the reason this is important is because this one Airbnb takes me between 30 to 60 minutes per week to manage, that's it. So I can make 60 to $75,000 per year in income with only trading an hour or so per week, where before I had to trade you know, 40 to 60 hours a week for that level of income. So you guys have to focus on some type of business or side hustle in order to replace your active income. And it doesn't even have to be real estate. This is just the path that I chose initially. It could be building a brand on social media, doing affiliate marketing, e-commerce, or whatever suits your fancy. So to recap so far, we have number one, increasing your income. It's the number one thing you could do today to get into the second thing, which is building a successful side hustle, which leads me into number three, which is investing. You have to become an investor if you want to become wealthy long-term. So increasing your income is gonna help you get into that profitable side hustle faster, and then standing up a profitable side hustle paired with your increased income is going to help you increase a higher amount of money at a faster rate. And the more money you can invest at an earlier age, you let the compounding uh, effect turn on over the next several decades, it's not going to be challenging for you guys to become multimillionaires by the age 40, 50, or 60 years old. The path that I chose and that made the most sense to me was real estate and more specifically short-term rental properties, think Airbnb properties. Now the reason I chose real estate and Airbnb specifically are cash flow. Airbnbs produce three to 10x the level of cash flow or profit each month that a long-term rental does. So it only takes a few short-term rentals to replace most people's nine to five income. I was able to become financially free in just one year at age 27 with only three properties. Think about that for a second, pretty crazy. So cash flow is what's gonna set you financially free. And then the depreciation and tax benefits are going to reduce how much you actually pay to the IRS each year. Um, and this, it really is a huge advantage for you guys because if you're earning a lot of money at an active income job, you are paying the most amount in taxes. The middle class pays the majority of the taxes in this country. So in order to make more money but pay less in taxes, you need to invest in real estate. The third thing that makes real estate really special is the long-term capital appreciation. Historically in the United States, uh, real estate has appreciated around 4% year over year. So it hedges your money against inflation and helps build your wealth long-term. 
And then you also have the renters that are paying down the note on the property if you didn't buy cash, which most real estate investors do not buy cash. So you are getting the property paid off. And after 30 years, it's most likely paid free and clear, and you have a massive amount of wealth accumulated. Now for all the Dave Ramsey fans out there that were bashing me in my last video about how Dave was you know, telling people don't do Airbnb properties, buy rental properties, all cash. Let me explain a little bit further on why most real estate investors do not pay in cash and why you should not either if you're thinking about getting started. Dave likes to preach, save up your money until you can buy a rental property all cash. The problem with that is number one, your return on your investment tanks because you're not using leverage, which is one of the beauties of real estate. So instead of saving up $100,000, which is going to take most people a long time, like years, if not decades, to save up $100K to go buy a $100,000 rental property, all cash, you can now buy five properties with 20% down or $20,000 down. So you're going to get cash flow from five properties now instead of one, even though the cash flow on the one will be higher than each individual one of the five because there's no debt service, there's no loan to pay down each month. However, now we have five properties. We're getting principal pay down on the loan each month by the renters and five properties worth of tax benefits and depreciation and five properties worth of appreciation long term. So the overall compound effect is gonna be much stronger if you do leverage early on. And hold off in the comments, I know all of you keyboard warriors out there, but Michael, where are we gonna find a $100,000 property in the United States? Number one, there are properties all over the country for under 100 grand, but two, guys, this is just an analogy, this is just an example to show you easy to consume numbers for the YouTube video. It's applicable if you do a $500,000 or a million dollar property, buying all cash or leveraging debt for multiple properties. Same principles apply. The other challenging part I mentioned earlier in this video, in 2010, the median home price into, um, was $222,000, and in 2023, it was 430 something thousand dollars. Now, if you're trying to save up a prop, uh, save up all cash to buy a rental property, imagine if it took you 10 years to save up the $220,000 to buy one. Well, great. By 10 years, you would have saved up enough, but now homes are worth over 400 grand, so you still can't buy it. You're just going to be saving forever unless you have substantial income. So that is why I recommend leveraging debt in order to buy rental properties. To recap this video, you need to do three critical things if you want to escape the middle class and escape the rat race. Number one, focus on your income or develop a high income skill. Don't be married to the job or married to the career unless that's all you wanna do in life, but I don't recommend it. Um, and don't increase your expenses each time your income increases. So don't go buy a fancy home, don't go buy a supercar just with the increased level of income. That is called lifestyle creep and that will keep you poor your whole life, okay? Increase your income. Number two, you need to develop a side hustle. While you're working your nine to five in your free time, work on that side hustle that can eventually grow into a business that can replace your main source of income. And then thirdly, and most importantly, long-term, and this is how you become ultra wealthy, is invest, invest, and invest some more. Invest in things like real estate specifically because it produces cash flow, it builds your wealth, reduces how much you pay in taxes, and so much more. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. If you got any value from it, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe and hope to see you again in the future.